Hey everyone, it's Coach Ross with Coach Ross Football bringing you another video today. Uh, this will be the second video in a series I'm trying to do regarding the inside zone running scheme in your offense. Uh, the first video we talked about uh, using a ta or tagging on a H motion into the run scheme to offer a little swing pass to the H or also fake that with the, uh, the run or vice versa. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. But before we get into the video, uh, do me a favor and hit that like button if you like this content. Also, subscribe if you want to see this content or any other future content that I'm going to put out. So getting back into this video, <clears throat> again, we're going to be talking in this one about different uh, defensive fronts you might find uh, playing up against and uh, how the blocking schemes could be set up to help you be more successful in the run game. Now, we see uh, multiple fronts within our um, within our season, and so – we try and go through and try and simulate all those uh, all those defensive fronts that we might see in practice. Um, and we have simple little rules that we keep it uh, for the uh, for our offensive linemen. Uh, it's a basic lineman rule that we follow is uh, inside, head up, or outside. So in other words, what that means is most important. Obviously, you've got to guard your inside inside gap first. If you got no one inside of you, then you're worried about your your uh, defender head up with you, and then lastly the outside. So it's obviously inside is most important. So to start off with here, we're going to talk about <clears throat> the inside zone against a four four defense. That we, and this is one of the defense that we see a lot of throughout the season. We see a four 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 down lineman and four linebackers. So I'm showing you the inside zone right here out of our two by two set, and um, what we do. This is an inside zone to the left. What we like to do is again just going to go through the rules here uh, we'll start with a play side tackle if he has nobody in his play side b gap okay then he's looking at head up and then if he's got no one head up then he is looking to his outside shoulder so there right now he has a defensive end on the outside shoulder so he's going to take that uh, defensive end one-on-one -on -one and block him and typically we'll we tell, tell him to carry him out to the backfield and out of the play. Okay, but his number one rule, the play side tackle's number one rule is to make sure that no one flashes in front of his face and cuts into the B gap. If that happens, then he's supposed to come off of the outside, most outside guy and pick up the, uh, the player in the, uh, in the uh, play side B gap. <clears throat> Going down the line here, our play side guard, again, same rule. If there's no one play side A gap, okay, then you're worried about head up. He's got someone head up. And then lastly, outside. But if he's got someone head up, he will take that defensive tackle and block him, obviously, get to his outside or his inside shoulder to try and move him to the outside because the inside zone is designed to go in between the guard and the center play side. Now with the center, um, again, play side A gap is his number one concern too as well if not then head up and then outside which would be backside um a gap but since he's got no one here what what he would do is he would then if there's no one in either one of those spots he's then going to take a power step to the play side and he's going to combo with the uh with the guard now when we teach the combo block both of their eyes are on this nearest linebacker right here okay and whatever way that linebacker breaks towards the ball, they will disengage from their double team block here and they will go and engage the linebacker. But they are both told on this double team to push this double team into the, into the linebacker so that it's an easier block to make whichever one, whether the guard or center has to disengage off their block with the lineman to then take and engage the linebacker. On our backside, <clears throat> same rules apply. Again, inside, which would be this right guard or this this uh, backside guards. Uh, if there's anybody lined up in the A gap, he is to take that person. Then it's head up. Then it's outside. And uh, right here, he's got one head up. So then he's going to take that. And again, we'll dis we'll uh, continue with a combo block with our backside tackle. Now our backside tackle has a specific rule on um, on our inside zone play. He's going to leave the most outside guy. We're not going to block the backside defensive end or even a backside outside linebacker. We're going to leave that defender unblocked because, again, we have a little bit of a tag that we run off of this that we see if the defensive end is getting a little too aggressive, we can tag the uh, quarterback keeper off of that and we will keep and have the running back or, the, excuse me, the quarterback 
come off on a keeper and run in between the two receivers uh, on the backside if we take advantage of this defensive end coming down the line a little bit too aggressively. Okay, so we will keep an eye on that. We don't teach the quarterback to read the defensive end, but we do have a tag if we see that that, that defensive end is being a little bit aggressive on the line. We can take advantage of his aggressive, aggressiveness. So, again, the tackle – the backside tackle, if he has no one flashing in front of him, he's going to combo with the backside guard. And they, again, just like the other two, are going to combo, take that combo block all the way to second level with their eyes on the nearest linebacker. And, again, whichever way he breaks, if he breaks to the middle of the field, the guard will disengage. If he breaks to the outside, then the tackle disengages and engages the linebacker. And then the running back, his aiming point again, is right off the center's butt going in between, trying the best to go in between the guard and the center. But he, again, we teach a, uh, the bang, the bounce and the bend. If he's, he's going to bang it first here. If not, he's going to bounce it. And then if not, he can bend it. So he's always keeping trying to read the blocks right here and get up field. All right. Here is a blocking scheme setup that we do and when we see a, against a 3-5-3. Three, three. Uh, we saw a little bit of this defense quite a bit last year where they would line up three down linemen. Sometimes they would drop in linebackers and make it actually a five-man uh, front or six-man front by bringing two linebackers. But after we started hitting some screens, some vertical passes, these linebackers would eventually just sit back and we would just see three coming. So on these, again, same rules apply. However, um, if our guards or our tackles don't have anybody either head up uh, inside or inside head up or outside, then we are telling them to release straight to the second level and try and pick off the nearest linebacker and try and get to that play side shoulder to seal them away from the play. So, for example, in this diagram right here, again, play side tackle would have the defensive end. Again, not letting him flash in front of his face to the B gap, the, the play side B gap. Now, guard doesn't have anybody inside, head up, or outside technically. So then that guard would then release out to the second level with its eyes towards the nearest outside or inside linebacker, which would be um, the outside linebacker that is head up or stacked in behind the uh, defensive end. Now, in this case, our center is going to have somebody head up. We're going to have the nose tackle head up. Um, so then again, it would be a combo with our backside guard because no one had a, uh, no one inside, or actually technically that nose tackle could be considered inside. Would then come, so they he would combo with the center, and again they would take that combo block all the way to that nearest middle linebacker, and whichever way that linebacker engages, whether he engages and breaks off this way or. He engages and breaks it this way. Either the guard or the center will disengage off their block with the nose tackle to then engage that linebacker at the second level. <clears throat> now, again, our backside tackle, he is a leaving that defensive end alone. Again, we are going to leave that backside defensive end unblocked because we are going to, again, have a coach or, or me watching that defensive end to see how aggressive he is. If he sits, then we just keep handing the ball off. But if we see him take that aggressive uh, run towards the running back, we will take advantage of that aggressiveness. And later on in a, in a play call, we will tag on the, uh, the star keep to it or the quarterback keeper that we call it uh, and take advantage of that aggressiveness. And then again, once we hit that play for a couple times, you will see this defensive end then be a little bit more conservative and not have to rush down the line to try and be aggressive with the running back because now he realizes that he's got burnt on either the run or the quarterback. So he's going to be a little bit more careful and not get burnt to the outside and get faked out. So that backside tackle is then going to take a power step again, not letting anything flash in front of his face to that backside B gap. He's going to release out into the second level and he's looking for that nearest inside linebacker to seal off to the outside portion of the field. Again, running backs rules and aiming points stay the same right up the center and then breaking it off to in between the guard and the center. And again, he can either bang it down, he can uh, bounce it to the outside if he needs to, or he can bend it back towards uh, an opening in the, uh, in the backside of the line.
This next look uh, we're going to talk about here is uh, against a typical 5-3 defense. With a Now, with this 5-3, I'm talking about uh, two defensive tackles, a nose tackle, and two defensive ends, and typically they're uh, all five down linemen. Uh, sometimes you might see a defensive end standing up, but a lot of times uh, these, these five men have their, uh, their hands in the dirt. Um, all blocking rules stay the same. Now, again, with the inside zone, we're trying to get to double team uh, blocks as quickly as possible. But with the rules that we play, again, inside, head up or outside, on a 5-3 in alignment like this, the only real double team that's going to take place would be between the uh, backside, which would be the backside guard and the backside tackle again. Backside tackles rule still stays the same. He's going to leave that defensive end uh, unblocked. He's going to double team with the backside guard and they're going to carry that double team all the way up to the second level. Now on a five, three like this, we should take out uh, and remove two linebackers outside of the, uh, outside of the box because they're going to be busy covering up on the, uh, on our two slot receivers and our two by two set. So they're going to carry. So these two backside uh, uh, linemen are going to then just have to carry their, their combo block all the way up to the second level to worry about that one linebacker in whatever way he engages. Now, typically he's more likely going to engage and pursue the running back, which would be more off to the guard, the, the, uh, the guard side. So the guard typically will have to disengage from his double team to then try and engage the, uh, the linebacker. But again, we teach them to take this combo and we tell them to carry that combo into the linebacker aiming and trying to push towards that linebacker so that the, the, uh, the engaging of the, uh, the second, second defender is a little bit easier for, the, uh, for that lineman to reach. But everybody else is one-on-one -on -one with their blocks and running back is reading their blocks and he's either banging it first, he's bouncing it, or he wants to bend it. Now, uh, an easy bend would be to bend back, um, back around by in, be in between the, uh, the backside guard and center two as well. And again, we are looking to see and always watching that backside defensive end to see how aggressive he is and if we can take advantage of his aggressiveness. All right, this is a cut up to show you the inside zone out of our two by two set here. This is a good example of what we teach our linemen to do as far as getting downfield. Uh, if they have nobody inside, head up or outside of them. And the center does a great job of adjusting and getting downfield, looking for someone to block. And he does get in the way of a defender and the running back is able to get a big gain out of it. So we'll play it out and then I'll show you what I'm talking about in slow motion. And go back here you see the center release. He releases out and he's looking, he's aiming for this linebacker who had seemed to drop back and that's the nearest linebacker that he's looking for. Everyone else has had on hat here, which is a good blocks. And the runner back does a good job of reading the blocks and he reads and he bounces the, the run out to the outside a little bit and makes for a really good game. All right, in this clip, this is just a good example of, again, our bouncing this, the running back bouncing this play to the outside. The key here is he was reading the block off the play side tackle, and the play side tackle has no defensive end right here. He is now worried about this linebacker right here, and again, thinking that linebacker might come to the outside, but instead that linebacker comes and pushes and tries to flash in front of his face, so he does a great job of adjusting to his block and we teach him don't let anybody flash inside you so he adjusts his block and pushes him more to the inside which is fine and then the running back adjusts his run and bounces to the outside for a big game again i'll bring it back here just to show you this linebacker right here is where he's he's keying in on right here and that linebacker tries and gets cut up inside. And you can see the running back now is trying to bounce the run to the outside. And from there, it's just a big gain. It's a great athleticism. And this is going to conclude this video. This is, again, this is the second video in a series I'm going to be doing, talking about the inside zone. The first one, again, was uh, tagging on the H motion into a little bit of a swing pass and, and uh, pairing that in with the inside zone as well. And you can use it. It's a nice little tag to add into your offense. This is talking about the blocking schemes against different multiple fronts. Um, 
give this video a like if you liked what you saw. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of my content that will be coming out here in the near future. Also, in the comments below, talk about uh, do you use the inside zone or you know do you block it any differently? I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear if there's any different ideas as to how to block it and uh, what to teach. But you know, there, this is what, how we teach our alignment. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.